once again, thank you for joining me for the Psalm 46 study. We are on verse 4 this time, and I just wanted to let you know, just in by way of recap, what we've covered so far. I'm not going to go through all of it because you can watch those videos, but I wanted to start by reading through the first four verses of Psalm 46, and then recapping a little bit of what the setting is, and then talking about verse 4 today. And so, I'm going to go ahead and read those first four verses. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Selah. And then verse 4 says, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. And what we have here is Hezekiah, who was king of Jerusalem at the time. He and the rest of the city are completely surrounded by the besieging armies of the Assyrians. And I won't go into all the detail, but one of the things that Hezekiah was able to do was to cut a channel of water. He actually diverted the water from being used by the Assyrians who were outside of the walls of Jerusalem. And he was able to channel those waters cutting through rock underneath the city of Jerusalem to channel those waters so that the people that were in Jerusalem would be able to have access to water while they were under siege. And I recently saw a video where they were taking a tour of that actual channel now that's been excavated that Hezekiah was able to, to cut through rock. And it's, they have it available now for people, I think. I think it's open to the public. I could be wrong. But at any rate, on the video, they were showing the path um, down to see that actual channel and it still has water running through it which I think is pretty incredible but anyway I want to get right into verse 4 it says there is a river speaking of that stream that channel of water that Hezekiah was able to divert um, into the besieged city it says there is a river the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God the holy place of the tabernacles of the most high the first thing I want to talk about is where the word rivers or streams. Um, a few of the sources that I looked into um, had pretty much the same. They, they agreed um, that the river is a constantly flowing river. And the one in particular that Psalm 46 is talking about is actually a river that flows beneath Zion, which is another name for the city of Jerusalem. And E.W. Bullinger actually says that it's constantly filling and supplying. And keep that in mind as we talk about the how we apply this to our relationship with God. Um, and I'll, I'll also throw in, is uh, I had found... Uh, did some research and says that Hezekiah built a 1,750 foot channel cut through rock to provide water from the Gihon Spring so that water could not be, so that that water couldn't be cut off by Sennacherib, who was the king of Assyria that was laying siege to Jerusalem. And now the archaeologists have excavated this and not perfectly. Uh, doing the math, but 750, 1,750 feet is roughly one-third of a mile. Can you imagine cutting a channel secretly through solid rock to provide water? I think that's pretty amazing. And then we get into the word streams. In the uh, Strong's in the Hebrew, that means a channel or a canal. So we are talking, I, I'm pretty confident that Psalm 46 is talking about the um, Hezekiah's channel and that this is about Hezekiah. And it says, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. And in my mind, that, of course, means Jerusalem. 
And I wanted to read to you a little bit, though, before we get into the city of God. The pulpit commentary says about the rivers, the river and the streams. It says, in contrast with the scene of tumult and disturbance in the world at large, which the writer has presented to us in verses 2 and 3, he now shows us, resting in perfect peace and tranquility, the city of God, threatened indeed by the nations, but undismayed by them, and calmly trusting in the protection of the God who is in the midst of her. To this city he assigns a river, the streams whereof make her glad, Imagery in which we may recognize the perennial fountain of God's grace, that pure river of water of life, which welling forth from the throne of God and of the Lamb, continually refreshes and gladdens the church of Christ. And the, the reference there is Revelations 22.1. Now, on my, my thoughts about it is, even before I read the pulpit commentary, is that Usually when the Bible speaks of a river, that's usually a reference. If it's, if it's got spiritual implications, it usually represents the life of God or the word, which is a river. It's living water. You know, Jesus said he came, he told the woman at the well, you know, I can give you living water. You're coming here to draw water, but I, you know, I'm the fountain of living water because he was the word. And then you think about, you know, if you're a child of God, then you're a citizen of the city of God, the heavenly Jerusalem. And then that leads us right into the, the second part of this verse. It says the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. You know, so if we're in the city of God and he says we can come into the holy place, well, the holy place... I did some research and I couldn't really find exactly, you know, people, people weren't really saying for sure this is it. But I'm just going to tell you in my own mind, the holy place, it could, it could mean the holy place, but the most holy place is what I picture when I think about when it says the holy place of the tabernacles of the most high. Um, you know, the, the tabernacle, or the most holy place, or it was also called the Holy of Holies, that was the most, um, it was the most cut off from most people. That's not the best way to say it, but you know, that was the place where the, the high priest went once a year. He went one time in a year into the Holy of Holies. But after Jesus' death on the cross rent the veil that separated us, and that's a whole other teaching in itself. But when Jesus died on the cross and the veil to the Holy of Holies was rent in two, and that barrier was removed for us, and it allows us as a child of God to come into the very presence of God. That's what this makes me think of. That God's got us, there's all this tumult going on outside in the world, outside in our lives, in our circumstances. But where God tabernacles, where God dwells, which is what tabernacle means, where God dwells. And, and Jesus said in John 15, if you abide in me and I abide in you. Remember that? He said, you shall ask whatever you will and it shall be given to you. Well, God dwells in me, and I also am given access to dwell in Him and come into His presence. So the holy place is the set-apart place where God tabernacles with me, where God meets with me, and I can fellowship with, with others who are of like mind in, that, in the presence of God. You know, God has provided this place and he's saying, you know, the waters of blessing, I don't know if this is making any sense, but he's saying that it's constantly filled, it's constantly supplying, just like that river into the heart of Jerusalem, where God tabernacles with his people. It's a never-ending water of blessing that supplies and refreshes God's presence, if that makes any sense. And to know that... 
I can have all this this turmoil going on on the outside but on the inside I can have that peace just like a river I can have the refreshing of a river which is God's Word and and I have the opportunity and the access to come into God's very presence and let his peace as it says in Philippians 3 the peace of God which passes all understanding, guarding my heart and my mind in Christ Jesus. No matter what is going on outside of that place, I can have that inner peace. That is just amazing to me. And in, in this verse, let me, let me read it again. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. There's no mistaking that this place is where God dwells. He invites us to meet him there in his presence, the place where he dwells, his tabernacle. It is amazing to me that he, he, he wants to be the peace amidst our turmoil. That's what this verse says to me. I want to see here if I, I hope I didn't skip ahead and, or forget anything. Um... I have written here the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. Both the tabernacle and the temple had a holy place, a most holy place. And this is the place where I can get alone with God in His presence. You know, Bullinger also said the word there in verse 4 is tabernacles. And I was wondering, okay, does that mean something other than what I was thinking, which is the tabernacle of the temple or, <clears throat> excuse me, the tent? And so I looked that up, and in Strong's, the word tabernacles means a residence, the tabernacle. And then Bullinger says that the word tabernacles, the very idea in Hebrew that in, in this instance... And in others, too, I, I've seen this throughout um, the King James Bible that sometimes and I, I can't I don't know enough about, you know, Hebrew, the Hebrew language. But Bullinger was a scholar in Hebrew, and he says that the fact that the word tabernacle is plural is an indication of majesty. So that means it is an indication it's pointing to talking about. God's majestic dwelling, God's majestic tabernacle. So by way of application, I just want you to understand that God is not unaware of what you, is going on in your life or in the world at large. He hasn't tuned out. He's not busy with other things and he just can't get to you. Just remember, this is the God who has numbered the hairs on your head. He knows every detail of your life. He knows every hidden thought in your heart. He knows every desire that you've never ever spoken to another human being. God's aware of it. And he says that in the middle of the chaos and the tumult and the problems and the issues and the never-ending series of bad news that you might be going through in this world today, God says, there is a river Whose stream, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, shall make glad the city of God. I believe, I looked up that word glad. Oh, yes, I'm glad I came back to that. Okay, they make glad. Strong's in the Hebrew, it means to brighten up, to be gleesome, to be blithe. And... Another, this isn't the, an, another description is, or in a translation, the word was delight. But, you know, so we've got God saying here, he's got his stream going, it's hidden to the enemy. The enemy doesn't even know the source of it. And in the middle of all these problems, God has provided a stream that will make you, it'll brighten up. Your, your outlook, your perspective on everything. And so he's got this river, and then he's got his tabernacle, his secret place for you to meet with him and to get God's perspective on you in this situation, 
In other words, he wants to transform your thinking. He wants to give you a, a new lens to look through on your situation. And he wants to instill hope in you. And he wants you to know that he's got you. He's got your back. You put your faith in him. You tabernacle with him. And he's going to bring you through this in a way that you would not have even been able to come up with on your own or even conceived of. Because, you know, with, with God, all things are possible. That's what Jesus said. With men, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. That brings us to the end of our study for verse 4. I hope you've enjoyed this study. And if you know anyone that could use some encouragement during our crazy times right now, please share this. And um, anyway, I hope you will be with me for the next study, which will be on verse 5. And we'll see, we'll just mine the depths of, of the um, treasures that God has for us in this tiny little psalm that is just power packed. Thank you for joining me. God bless you and we'll see you next time.